Hello, welcome back to the brand new session of module 10, Daniel of Service. So DOS or you can say Daniel of Service or maybe you can say distributed Daniel of Service that is known as DDoS. So DOS and DDoS attacks are major threat to computer networks. So the, these attacks attempts to make a machine or network resource unavailable to its authorized users. So usually DOS and DDoS attacks exploit vulnerabilities in the implementations of transmission control protocol or maybe the internet protocol that is known as TCP or maybe the IP model or bugs in a specific operating system. So in this session, we are going to discuss a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of topics. So let's start our first topic that is DOS attack. So the DOS attack is an attack on a computer or network that reduces, restricts or prevents access to the system resource for legitimate users. In DOS attacks, attackers flood a victim system with uh, non-legitimate services request or traffic to overload its resources and bring down to the system. Leading to the unavailability of this victim's website or at least significantly reduce the victim's systems or network performance. So the goal of the DOS attack is to keep legitimate users from using the systems rather than to gain unauthorized access to the systems or to corrupt the data. So the next is what is DDoS attack? So DDoS attack is a large scale coordinated attack on the uh, uh, you know availability of the services on the victim systems or network resources and it is launched indirectly through many compromised computers or you can say botnets on the internet. So as defined by the World Wide Web Security for uh, FAC, a distributed Daniel of services attack uses many computers to launch a coordinated DOS attacks against one or more targets. Using client server technology, the preparator is able to multiply the effectiveness of the Daniel of service significantly by harnessing the resource of multiple uh, unwitting compliance or you can say a complete computers which serve as attack platforms. So the flood of the incoming messages to the target system essentially forces it to shut down thereby denying the services to the legitimate users. So the service under attack belonging to the you know primary victim whereas the compromised system used to launch the attack are called secondary victims. So the use of secondary victims in the performing a DDoS attack enables the attacker to mount a large disruptive attack while making it difficult to track down the original attacker. So the primary objective of the DDoS attack is to first gain administrative access on the many systems as possible. In general, attackers use a customized attack script to identify potential vulnerable system. After gaining access to the target systems, the attacker uploads and runs DDoS software on these particular systems at the time chosen to launch the attack. And uh, you know, DDoS attacks have become popular because you know of, of easy uh, because of easy accessibility of exploits plans and you know the negligible amount of brain work required to execute them so the attacks can be very dangerous because they can quickly consume the largest host on the internet rendering them useless so i found this is a nice picture that how do ddos attacks works so in ddos attacks many applications barrage a target browser on a network with a fake exterior request that make the system network browser or site slow useless and disable all the unavailable so the attacker initiate the ddos attack by sending a command uh, you know command to zombie agents which are internet connected computers compromised by the attacker through malware programs to perform various malicious activity through a command and control right or you can say command and control server so these zombies agents send the connection request to the large number of reflector right and uh, with the you know with the spoofed ip addresses of the victim right which cause the reflector systems to presume that these requests originate from the victim's machine instead of the zombie agents hence the reflector systems send the request information uh, to the victim consequently the victim machine is flooded with the unsolicited responses from the several reflector computers simultaneously which may either reduce the performance or cause the victim's machine to shut down completely 
so the next point is botnets so bots are used for you know bannings um, data collections or data mining activities such as web spidering as well as to coordinate DOS attacks so the main purpose of a bot is to collect the data there are different type of bots such as either internet bots IRC bots chatter bots example for IRC bots are you know card nearly uh, Sopel, egg drop and energy Mac or a lot of things so the botnet is a group of computers infected by bots right and you can see that there is two words bot and net bot means robot and net means network so it is a group of computer infected by bots however botnets can be used for both positive and negative purposes as a hacking tool a botnet is uh, you know composed of a huge network compromised uh, systems uh, relatively small botnets of 1000 bots has a combined bandwidth larger than bandwidth of the most corporate system so the you know malicious code is the primary tool used by criminal organizations to commit cyber crimes so botnets honor order both bots and other malicious programs such as trojans viruses worms key loggers and specially crafted applications to attack remote computers via networks so developers offers malware services on the public sites or uh, closed internet resources so botnets are agent that an intruder can send to a server systems to perform an illegal activity and botnets runs hidden programs that allow the identification of the system vulnerabilities so attackers can use botnets to perform the uh, you know tedious task involving uh, involved in probing a systems for non vulnerabilities so the next point is basic categories of DOS and DDoS attack vectors. So DOS attacks mainly aim to diminish uh, the network bandwidth by exhausting network applications or service resources, thereby restricting legitimate users from accessing the systems or network resources. So in general, DOS and DDoS attacks vectors are categorized as I have categorized into the screen right now. So you can just have a look into that part. So yeah, so the next is, you know, the DOS and DDoS attack techniques, which you can see that on my screen right now, I have added. So UDP flood attack, ICMP flood attack, pod, smurf, pearl, zero day, sim flood, fragmented, SEK flood, TCP state, spoofed, you know, HTTPS, slow raise, UDP distributed, or maybe the reflection DOS, then uh, TCP SAC, DDoS extortion attack and so on. So yes, we will have a look into the lab demonstration session that how we can, uh, you know, attack as a DDoS or maybe the DOS attacks on the target system. So yeah, there is a case study. So in a, uh, in a DOS attacks or maybe the in DDoS attacks, um, Attackers use a group of compromised systems, bots or maybe the zombies, usually infected with the Trojans to perform DOS attacks on the target system or maybe the network resource. So as shown in the figure, as you can see that on my screen right now, the anonymous hacker host a high orbit, uh, you know, uh, ion cannon that is known as HOIC. So DDoS attacks tools on a web server, they on or on a compromised web server. So the hacker then advertises the HOIC DDoS attacks tools on the social networking sites or search engines such as Twitter, Facebook and Google with a malicious download link. So users who desire to perform the DDoS attacks, uh, download the HOIC DDoS attacks tools by clicking on the malicious download link provided by the hacker. These users are termed volunteers. All the volunteers cannot via connect via the uh, you know uh, IRC channel to the anonymous hacker and await instructions to the proceed proceed further. So the hacker instructs the volunteers to flood the target web server with a multiple request, right? So on receiving instructions, the volunteers act accordingly. Consequently, the target server becomes overwhelmed and stop responding to requests from even legitimate user. So this is a nice case study and this is a nice picture from where you can get the exact details about the DOS attacks or maybe the DDoS attacks. So yes, uh, this is a Microsoft Azure case study from the DDoS attacks. So Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing platform as we all know that designed for application management over the cloud from Microsoft based data centers. So in August 2021, Microsoft encountered a devastating 2.4 dpbs DOS attacks, DDoS attacks that made its service unavailable to Azure customers for over 10 minutes. So this attack was 140% larger than the previous 1 TBPS attacks that was detected and mitigated on Azure in quarter 3 of 2020. 
so that was the attack timeline as i have told you so this is all the details related with the microsoft azure ddos attacks which which uh, we got on the microsoft azure and then for the 10 minutes all the services were was interrupted well you can go through the mechanism of the microsoft azure as it is a official you know official and actually it is a good company so that's why i am not talking about the more but yeah you can just go through the attack mechanism uh, i have added in my slide okay so the next point is DOS and ddos countermeasure strategies which is the last point of this particular session so you know as you can see that there are three important points absorbing the attacks, regarding uh, the services and shutting down the services so absorbing the attack i will just give you the uh, you know short overview about these particular three points so in this strategy additional capacity is used to absorb an attack which requires pre-planning and it also requires additional resources actually so one disadvantage associated with this strategy is the cost of additional resources which is uh, incurred even when no attacks uh, are underway so that is uh, absorbing the attack the second is regarding the services uh, if it is not possible to keep all services functioning during the attack it is a good idea to keep at least the critical services functional for these the critical services are first identified following which the network systems and applications designed are customized to cut down the non-critical services so this strategy may help keep the critical services functional and the last but not the least shutting down the services in this strategy all services will be shut down until the attack has uh, you know succeeded through it may not be the ideal choice it may be reasonable response in some cases So if I just talk about the DDoS attack countermeasures, so many solutions have been proposed for mitigating the effects of DDoS attacks. However, no single complete solution exists that can protect all known forms of DDoS attacks, right? Moreover, uh, attackers continually, continually uh, devise new methods to perform DDoS attacks to bypass the security solutions employed. So there are some following examples for DDoS attacks countermeasures, right? So there are, I have uh, added six steps uh, chart, which you can just follow uh, for the DDoS attack countermeasures. And in the last, if I just talk about the DOS and DDoS protection tools, right or maybe the protection services protection services i will uh, tell you in the next slide but uh, the protection tools uh, i can recommend you for this particular tool because i have personally used this tool so anti ddos guardian is a dos attack protection tool it protects iis server apache server game servers you know camfrog servers mail servers ftp uh, ftp servers voip pbx sip servers and other similar systems so anti ddos uh, guardian monitors each incoming and outgoing packet in real time so it displays the local addresses remote addresses and other information of each network flow anti ddos guardian limits network flow number client bandwidth client uh, concurrent tcp connection number and tcp connection rate so it also limits the udp bandwidth and udp uh, connection rate and udp packets rate so there are a lot of features which you can use in nt ddos guardian because i have personally used so yeah you can use this particular tool along with that particular tool you can also use ddos protection uh, you know dos arrest dos protection service then uh, ddos guard then cloudflare then f5 ddos uh, attack protection as well so there are a lot of tools but yeah i have uh, a list which you can use for ddos or maybe the dos protection tools so yeah i was talking about this dos and ddos protection services so there are a lot of services which we can use for uh, you know akamai ddos protection which we can use akamai provides ddos protection for enterprise regularly targeted by ddos attacks so uh, you know uh, app and api protector prolaxic web application protector edge dns so there are a lot of uh, features which we can use in akamai or otherwise if you do not want to use that so we can also use other tools like casper sky ddos protection tool maybe storm wall pro that is pro uh, choreo ddos protection as well nexus guard block dos so yeah i have added a list of complete list actually of dos and ddos protection services